Reverend Sirs, Your Excellencies, distinguished members of the panel, ladies and gentlemen. I have uh, three basic points to make. The first is that Sri Lanka's foreign policy at all times should be a realist one. Sri Lanka ve videsa pratipatthiya sama avasthave deema yatharta vaadi ekak viyayitu. That's the first point. By which I mean that it should be guided by the national interest. Jatika avashitavyan matapadanam vu yatharta vaadi videsa pratipatthiya viyayitu. Whenever we have practiced a realist foreign policy, we have succeeded. Whenever we have deviated from it, we have not. Api hama vita ma yatharta vaadi videsa pratipatthiya kanugamane karna vita apra sartha katthaya himi una esa e nukala avasthavala di api pasubasa. That is my first point. The second point is that I think that President Sirisena's foreign policy which was expressed in the video that we saw uh, before the session started was defined by him as an Asia-centric middle path. And I think that is the correct and realist foreign policy that Sri Lanka should adopt at all times, most especially in this post-war period. Sirisena Janadipa Tumage Videsa Pratipatthiya Etuma Visinma Api Meet Kalin Dutu Video Pate Nirvachane Kara Asya Kendriya Madamavat Pratipatthiya Khadiyata Mama Hitanama Sama Vitama Lanka Visin Anugamane Kala Yutu Videsa Pratipatthiya Pulul Vasayin E Nirvachane Gabbela Tiyanama Visesem Paschati Uddha Kale Di Emma Pratipatthiya Meratata Sudhusui Kela. My third point, Mr. Chairman, is rather more controversial. While the foreign policy as enunciated by the executive, by President Sirisena, who has been elected by a majority of the entire citizenry of this island, is realist, is positive, and is constructive. The very nature of the new administration, which is uh, an experiment in a kind of bipartisanship, has lent itself to a certain dualism in foreign policy. And in that dualism, I see the aspect of realism as represented by President Sirisena's policy. But I see another aspect which deviates from the foreign policy as enunciated by President Sirisena. Sirisena Janai Patumage Videsa Pratipatthiye e sadhani a gudanga dak lakshana mamma dakina atara mema andwe suisesha sobhave nisa dvivida natang dvitvakara demuhun so, Rupiak Mamadakino with this Pratipatti, Ek Atakin, Janadipati Tumage, Savidaeke, Yatarta Badi with this Pratipatti, Anek Ating, Emma Yatarta Badi with this Pratipatti, Pili Panina, Sobahavekut, Mama Dakino. Now, uh, Mr. Chairman, I will recall the uh, uh, key term used at one point by Dr. Henry Kissinger, that of intermestic affairs, by which he meant domestic affairs which have an international ramification and international affairs which have a domestic ramification. He spoke of issues at the interface of the domestic and the external, of the national and the international. And the Sri Lankan crisis over the decades has seen some incoherence in handling precisely those intermestic issues. I see that in an important set of issues of an intermestic character, 
power, certain power centers in the current Sri Lanka administration have taken positions which go against the national interest of Sri Lanka and will have the effect of disturbing the broad national consensus that is necessary to move forward with the program of reconciliation that President Sirisena has outlined. I say this particularly with reference to uh, the government's response to the UNHRC resolution in Geneva uh, in 2015. Now, uh, Mr. President, uh, I think uh, Ambassador Paliakar and I would uh, be able to uh, brief uh, the audience, so we don't have the time at the moment, of the situation that prevailed in the last stages of the war. We were attempting to liberate ourselves from a 30-year curse of a high-intensity terrorist war which was spearheaded by an organization of a fascist character, not merely a thug. And in the last stages, we who served in New York and Geneva respectively know the pressures we came under to try to stop us from liberating ourselves definitively from that separatist terrorist challenge. We were able, Ambassador Paliakara in New York and myself in Geneva, to hold the line and provide the international space necessary for the Sri Lankan state to liberate us completely. Now, at that point in 2009, in May 2009, uh, a resolution was sought to be brought against Sri Lanka. We know now from the WikiLeaks cables as well as the emails that the US Senate uh, had requested the former Secretary of State to bring into the public domain, that there was a concerted effort to stop the Sri Lankan military from decisively eliminating the LTT leadership. But we were able, through dint of effort, to prevent such a resolution from being brought uh, to the United Nations in New York and in Geneva. And in Geneva, we were able to move a preemptive counter-resolution which won an almost two-thirds majority. Now, the fault of the previous government was that while in its first term, it practiced under the direct guidance of President Rajapaksa, with whom we were in constant touch, a realist foreign policy which enabled us to get the international support and the space to win the war, that realism was not extended to the second term, to the post-war period. The resolution of the UNHCR in May 2009 was in support of Sri Lanka, but unfortunately, the previous administration did not fully implement that resolution. If it did, in all probability, we would have not faced the situation that we faced in subsequent years. That was the fault of the previous administration, but not in the manner in which it faced the challenges of May 2009 on the ground and in the international arena. That was a resounding success. Now, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, where are we today? What I found most shocking was that when the administration faced the UNHRC resolution in 2015, it not only chose not to negotiate, it aborted the negotiations that our diplomatic representatives were undertaking in Geneva. Now, all of this is in the press, especially in a very well-informed series of reports from Geneva by Darisha Bastian writing in the Daily FT. Our diplomats, uh, one of my successors, Ambassador Ari Singer, was negotiating the text of that resolution when the Honorable Prime Minister, according to the Daily FT, personally intervened, interrupted the negotiation and said, just sign up. That I find shocking, Mr. Mr. President, because the President's stand on the UNHRC resolution and on accountability has been very clear indeed. President Sirisena said in 
his interview with the New York Times and in an extensive interview with the BBC Sandeshia that he has full confidence in the Sri Lankan courts, especially after the 19th Amendment. He has full confidence in the Sri Lankan lawyers. He has full confidence in the Sri Lankan laws as implemented and implementable after the 19th Amendment and the freeing of uh, the institutions and processes from, a, from excessive political pressure. Now that is the correct position. That is the realist position. That is the position in line with the national interest. Mr. President, I am sad that your correct position on this has not been translated into policy by the representatives of this administration. Instead, what do we hear today? We hear that there will be local judges for judicial mechanism. Now, I refuse to be misled by the discussion on the adjective, local, and I'm far more concerned about the noun, mechanism. Why then? Special, a special mechanism. Why a special court? Which country in the world, I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, which country in the world has tried its armed forces, not members of a military junta, but the armed forces of a democracy, fighting a war within its own boundaries against a terrorist foe? Which country has set up special courts and a special prosecutor's office? Because I read Foreign Minister Samravira recently talking about independent special counsel. Swadina Vishesha Niti Gnavaru. Ape Niti Gnavaru Swadina Nad. Mokada me Vishesha Atte. Nati Swadina Atta Kohenda Dham me Niti Pati Department to him Paribahirava Karande Anwar. Ek Janadi Pati Tuma BBC Sunday Shets on New York Times Puat Patata Kiyapu Karna Avata Sampoorning. E Darshan Eta E Dakmata Sampoorning Pata Hain. Why special courts? Why a special prosecutor? Why special laws? There are existing laws which prevailed during the war. And if anyone had violated those laws, they should and must be tried under those laws through our courts. Just as from 1971, we have been able to jail those members of the armed forces who have committed murder and rape. Mr. President, if we deviate from the practices of the rest of the world, then we have to ask ourselves why we are doing that. One of the countries that uh, moved the resolution concerning Sri Lanka uh, had uh, a bad experience uh, a few months ago in Afghanistan, a hospital run by the MSF, was attacked by two Air Force planes and 47 people, doctors, MSF staff, and patients were killed. That country, a friendly country to Sri Lanka, took the relevant Air Force personnel, took them back to that country. There were no special courts to try them. They were reprimanded. This was just a few months ago. So why should we? have special courts to try our armed forces. Mr. President, I repeat, even in a trade union dispute, you negotiate the best deal possible 
for your side. And hopefully, that's the best deal possible for the company as a whole. Similarly, Sri Lanka could have negotiated a better deal for itself in Geneva under your government. But there was not even an attempt, and the attempt at negotiation was aborted. I don't think that's in keeping with what I understand to be your philosophy and your policies. Mr. President, there are clear models for Sri Lanka under your leadership. One is that of Iran under President Rouhani. The other is that of Cuba under President Raul Castro. Both are examples of constructive engagement of negotiation based on a principled pragmatism. I might even call it a smart patriotism. Prabuddha, pragnya gochara, prayogika desha premyak abravashvilatira. Merate, avasana vilatira, ekapattaking, pragnya gochara, novana desha premyak tibilatira, anikpattaking, pragnya gochara, ekila kiyana desha premyak ansu matra kvatnati, kompradoru pratipatti, triyatma gavira. Namut, apata puluang, obatuma ginaya katve yadate, apata avasya e pragnya gochara, प्रायोगिक देश प्रेमित्व सीएल उराटवाल वर्ल्ड मित्रत्व पामिंग क्रियात्मक करण नमूत मित्र वरुण आचार्य हेनरी किसिंजर किए पु जातियांतर मध्यगत कामक के दी देशीय प्रतिपत्ति हा देशी जात जाति का मध्यगत कामक है अति विदेशीय कारणा हरिये टक हलमना करने नकलो Rate, Samaj, Vishal, Vishangvadiya Kattigana. E Vishangvadiya, Dakune Evani Vishangvadiya Kattigana, Uturu Dakunu Sankindiya Ava Kriyatma Kakarana, Itama Apahasu Veda. Ape Amataka Nukala Yutui, Ape Rate, Uturu Dakunu, Akshayosse Yudhyak Pamana Nemi, Uturu Uturu Yudhyak Tibuna. EPRLF, EPDP, Vaman Sikha Sangvidana Sa Koti Sangvidana Yatar Ila Kata Dakune Nagitim Karali Gananava Tibuna Rata Le Vilak Bawada Patuna Eka Avastha Vannami Avastha Kee Pekadhi Itin Uturu Dakunu Akshe Pamanannami Dakunu Dakunu Sanghindi Aava Kutti Endona E Dakunu Dakunu Sanghindi Aava Saha Uturu Dakunu Sanghindi Aava Eka Vita Kriyatma Ka Karanna अवश्य एक अमर दे उपदुमार टा क्रियात्मक कराने पुलंग ये तमाय सामादे म मध्यम आवत प्रतिपात्तिया कानून तीन दुकिरी म एका उपदुमागे विदेश प्रतिपात्तिये साधारण वेला तीन The only way in which we can manage those problems that Dr. Henry Kissinger termed intermestic is to adopt a policy of the middle path as preached by the Buddha and practiced by SWRD Bananayaka, by Madam Bananayaka, and by our greatest foreign minister, a true Sri Lankan, Honorable Lakshman Kadrigam, who was a true guardian of national sovereignty. He believed in talking to everyone. He was friends with everyone. He had personal friendships with the administration of the United States. But as Mark Salter's book, recently quotes uh, Norwegian Secretary, uh, State Secretary Bida Helgeson, he was also very firmly opposed to the CFA and the P-TOMs. All of that is on the record. So Foreign Minister Khadr Gama believed in safeguarding national sovereignty, as Vida Helgeson says in Salter's book. But his was a policy of outreach around all points of the compass. Malima we sielu disantian samaga palam good naganeka saka chakarneka suadata veta my lakshman kadrigama matme ki videsi pratipatiyo. E pratipatiya apatitama gocharai. Namut Geneva sambanding Janadi Padituma Idri Patka Latina. प्रतिपत्ति ये टा आंडुए प्रतिपत्ति हास्तावरे आपाव मारु नून एवं उटा एक अपार्श्वीय 
अतिकर करने तीन है एकांगे तावेंग देशीय वासे एक क्रियात्मक करने उत्साह दरुवत आपे पश्चात युद्ध इधर ही गामन रहता आवश्य देशीय दाकुनु दाकुनु सांग हिंदी आवे सार तक नोवेंडी रहती है एक अनावश्य अनावश्य विसंगवाद एक अनावश्य प्रतिविरोध एक अंटा अनावश्य गठन वाला खेतु वन बाबा देशपाल ने विद्याग्नि कैटी रहे मटन न नियता ऐनिसा अब तुम आगे आसिया केंद्रीय मधुमावत विदेश प्रतिपात्तिया आंध्र पूरा क्रियात्मक करण न टा क्रमेय पूरा में राज्य क्रमेय पूरा क्रियात्मक करवान न टा सहार राज्य बिसिंग जाति अंतर में नियोजन करण न टा पुलुंग वेवा के लम्बा में प्रार्थना करूं अब तुम आंग मैं तक दी जाति अंतर ताले लंका वटा पुलुल कर दी यदि आवकाश है क्या ना मामा संतोष है ना I'm pleased and I'm grateful at the international space that you have widened for Sri Lanka by your intervention. I hope that no segment of the government acts in a way in which the domestic space, however, is narrow. ये जाते अंतर आवकाश है पुलुल भी में क्या ना मामा स्तुति बनता है ना अतरम आंधु ये समाहर बालकेंद्र एंड विसिंग करने काटियो तो निसा जाते अंतर क्षेत्रे देशीय आवकाश है नुहाकी ले ये बाकिया प्रातना कर्मिन मागे बाकी स्वाते आवश्यक करना